Hello everyone, it's Anthony Samaroff from BeYourselfAndLoveIt.com. This is episode 81 of the Be Yourself and Love It podcast and another video in my series on how to make small talk. So one of the things that I noticed in my workshops and running trainings with people to help them improve their social skills and their communication skills is there's a common problem that a lot of people come up against and it kind of happens when you get in a conversation with someone and you can not actually break out of speaking sort of conceptually and I'll give you some examples in a moment and sometimes you feel like you're never really getting to meet the person or that there's like there's a veil there's a wall between you and the other person you're kind of speaking conceptually but you're never really meeting them or you're you find that you can only speak about conceptual topics and you find it very difficult to speak about yourself or to put yourself in the story. So when people hear you, they think you're, you kind of, you're a little bit robotic or, or, or you just rattle. What, what, what you're speaking about is not emotionally engaging and you might not actually think that you're always like that, like around people that you know well, you find that you just relax and you can talk about anything and you, you tell stories from the past and you um, you uh, emote freely, you have a laugh, uh, you, you joke, you tease, but people get stuck in this this kind of conceptual frame of mind. I'm, I'm going to really need to unwrap that a little bit so that I can help you see the difference, right? So one of the games that we play in the small talk workshop is I give people a topic and that they have to sort of improvise speaking about that topic. And we use a random ge word generator to, to set the topic for the discussion. And it depends on where people are, how I coach them. So some people are just really beginning their, their, their journey and even just any topic, they find it very difficult just to start talking. So if that's the level that they're at, then that's fine. We just coach them through that part of the process. A little bit later, as we come more advanced, some people come up against this problem that I'm talking about, which is they can talk in very general abstract terms. So if you give them a topic like Venus uh, comes up in the random word generator, this is an exaggeration, but it's like, well, Venus is the second planet from the sun and it orbits at uh, degrees of, and its average um, surface temperature is 78 degrees, 780 degree, I don't know, whatever it is. You know what I mean? They, they give very, very factual information. And I, I'm kind of making fun, but this is actually a useful skill, you know, if, if, if you want to tell, if you, it, some people are very good at conveying information to people, and that is actually a good skill. The problem is when they can't break out of that. So I kind of contrast that as the conceptual topic. I had someone today, the word fossil came up and he actually what he told me was very interesting he was like well when i think of fossil i think of scotland actually because a lot of old fossils have been found here i think one of the oldest in the world was found on this this particular island in scotland and that was all really really interesting information but the thing is he wasn't in the story that's what i'm um, that, that, that's that's kind of what i'm speaking around so if we take the venus example how do you become more relatable? How are you able to say something that people can connect to? Um, well, you know, Venus, okay. Oh, when I think of Venus, I think of the fact that when I was young, I was really into space. You know, I, I, I was completely fascinated by all the sci-fi uh, sci shows on the television, the Outer Limits, the, the Twilight Zone, and I used to love these uh, computer games where you'd go and colonize a planet. That's enough, that's enough to get me into a conversation. I've said something about myself. What's great about speaking personally rather than conceptually is other people will find it very, very easy to contribute to the discussion if you shared a little bit about yourself. 
it's not that it's bad to talk about conceptual information. I'm never trying to take away any modes of communication. That's never the point of my trainings. It's all about giving us more options, more ways of being able to interact so we can choose the, the right tool for the situation that we're in freely without feeling like we are uh, kind of limited to talk the way that we usually talk and to get flexibility uh, from when it comes to changing channel. So anyone who's been to one of my workshops, one of the reasons why I love running events is a lot, uh, like I feel like I've got all my tools at my disposal. I just come into my own. So one bit, you know, I'll be really, if someone's talking about something that's quite difficult for them, I'm like there, I'm really, really um, compassionate and slow and deep and I can give them my attention that way. But, um, you know, one minute, you know, we're having a serious animated discussion about the conceptual frameworks that we're trying to learn and trying to convey. And then the next thing, I'm making an irreverent joke. So my personality is extremely flexible, especially when I'm in a good mood, because I can change between these different channels easily. And there's something in that being able to say, take a if, you, if we go back to the Venus example, I mean, what are your associations with Venus? The three big ones are the planet, but you could also go into the, the goddess, and again, uh, uh, the goddess Venus, and then the, the song Venus by, by Bananarama. Do you know what I mean? I don't think they did the original version, but you know what I mean. And, and either of those, you could go conceptual or, well, Venus was the Greek god of love and blah, blah. I don't really know much about Venus, but so-and-so. Or you could say, um, oh yeah, uh, Venus. I'm, I'm really interested in Greek mythology, actually. Or I had a, I had a friend who was really interested in Greek mythology, and one of the things in Greek mythology is that um, the the goddess Aphrodite apparently had a garter around her thigh that made her irresistible to women. And my friend actually was considering getting a tattoo of a garter around her thigh. That's pretty sexy. Okay, so, you know, that would be more relatable, kind of cute and funny. You need to make sure that you can get away with the, with the audience you're around. But one, one of the things that I found is, if you're cool with it, if you're comfortable with it, if you don't make it awkward, you can get away with a lot around most people because everyone's looking to you for social cues just as much as you're looking to them for social cues. The third one, the you know the song Venus, uh, yeah, that's like you know you can, it's a che che cheesy, cute song. What I remember is once I was playing a gig and um, there was a there was a burlesque dancer at the gig and she actually danced to the the song Venus. And when I saw her when I saw her in the changing room, I was like, um, "All right, oh, oh you have got it. Uh, what a great choice of song because uh, I thought it, it suited her act." Okay. There's tons of things. This makes it extremely easy for people to talk to me because they can go, oh, you played a gig. What do you play? What kind of instrument do you play? Oh, yeah, I've gone to a burlesque show once and I thought so-and-so, right? You're thinking we're, we're speaking on a different level than if we're simply um, talk, uh, if we're simply remaining in that abstract level. So the first thing is, how do you get, first thing is, Knowing is half the battle. So that the first thing is to know whether, do you find that you sometimes get stru stuck in that abstract level, which actually stops you from directly being able to meet people and have a sort of deeper relating where it's like nice and casual and it's not too heady. You, 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 like, I mean, we, how, talking about, talking about these things is interesting in some context, but then, and, and if both people are engaged, there's not a problem with that. But there could be a situation where, you know, you end up talking in the abstract to, about fossils and there's just this weird feeling that, that you're not, not really meeting someone. I have found, I've discovered through my workshops that one of the things that really helps people is if they're in the abstract, uh, they're conceptual, they're not in the story, they're not, they're not, they've not gone from talking about Venus the planet to talking about how it's relevant to them. There's three questions, there's probably more than these, but these are the ones that I usually help, I usually use. And I'll prompt someone, I'll say to them, okay, now tell us what you like about it. Or I'll say, tell us what you find interesting about it. Or I'll say, tell us how you feel about it. So 
actually the first one's an either or. So, so if they're talking about something, I might say, tell us what you don't like about it, if it sounds obvious that they don't like about it. So that's the first one. Tell us what you like slash don't like about it. Um, tell us how you feel about it or tell us what you find interesting about it. And what, you, what I would suggest that you do is, if you find yourself stuck in that sort of abstract, I'm trying to be relatable here, but I don't know how to make it about myself. I don't know how to prompt the other person to share more of themselves than me. You can self-prompt. You ask yourself to the, the question, okay, now I better say what I like about it. Oh, I better say how I feel about it. I better say what I find interesting about it. Okay, you can practice this. You can get a random word generator and see if you can tie the word that comes up to some personal story. Anecdotes are great. When you first meet someone, try and keep your anecdotes very, very short. But, they, but if you can tell specific stories, things that happened in your life, this will make you more relatable than if you just speak purely conceptually. Being able to speak conceptually is good as well. But as I say, we want to have more tools in our box. If you really want to get good at this, the best way to do it, well, is to give me a message and see if you'd like to do some coaching with me because I can get you to be really good at this and a whole bunch of other skills really, really, really quickly. I have not actually met or seen anyone doing the kind of drills and breaking things down the way that I do. Um, I wish I wish someone was doing it so that I could steal all their ideas <laughs> so, that, uh, so that I would have had to figure it out all, figure it all out myself would be more accurate. Like I'm really mapping these things out and I've been seeing amazing things happen with the people that I'm working with. Um, if not, then uh, just keep on watching the videos. The whole playlist is on YouTube. If you type on uh, Anthony Samroff, how to make small talk, you'll get all my previous videos on these subjects. Until next time, be yourself, but don't just be yourself. Be yourself and love it.